chasing what makes me feel alive to making my way into the world. I am ready to make great strides towards my goal. From juggling a busy life to choosing one that brings me joy. I am ready to go with what's best for me. From realizing my potential to going after bigger investments. I am ready to secure my future. Good day, everyone, and welcome to another leg of Inclusive, the Inquirer webinar series presented by the Philippine Daily Inquirer's Property Section and Avida Lan. I am Texa Maniego, editor of the Property Section, and I will be your host for this live stream event today. Over the last decade, we have seen the province of Cebu rising as a top tourist hub, owning to its iconic heritage sites and amazing spots and as an attractive investment destination, offering opportunities in outsourcing, real estate, construction, and manufacturing. However, Cebu, as with the rest of the world, was not spared from the crippling effects and difficulties of the pandemic. Today, as we start to, be to see green shoots of recovery, let us revisit Cebu to see why the Queen City of the South remains as an attractive tourist and investment destination and look into the opportunities that we can top beyond the pandemic. Before we introduce you to our panelists, we would like to show here a short message from our Tourism Secretary, Bernadette Romulo Puyat. Let's all watch the video. Maayong adlaw sa inyong tanan. Thank you to the Philippine Daily Inquirer in partnership with Ayala Land for organizing this webinar to showcase Cebu as a tourism and investment destination in the new normal. We know well that the tourism industry is among those greatly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. In response to the challenge, the Department of Tourism has been relentlessly working not only to help our tourism stakeholders get through this pandemic, but also to support the revitalization of the industry in a safe and sustainable manner. With the gradual easing of travel restrictions, we are encouraging our kababayans to travel once again. The Department of Tourism is continuously working with the IAPF this meeting is local being recorded. units in order to simplify the requirement for travelers. We want to make travel convenient while ensuring that everyone conforms to universally accepted health standards. Our domestic tourism campaign, Have a Safe Trip Pinas, focuses on how travel can still be fun, even while following stringent health and safety protocols. We have also been developing tourism products and circuits that will respond to the needs of tourists under the new normal. One example for Cebu is the mapping of restaurants with provisions for outdoor dining to develop alfresco dining circuits. Our Central Visayas Regional Office is undertaking capacity building programs across a wide range of sectors in Cebu to ensure visitors an enjoyable and memorable experience under the new normal. This will include seminars for tourist drivers and frontliners, health and safety protocols training, disability rights awareness and sensitivity training, and the Filipino brand of service training, among others. In terms of product and market development, We have the following in various stages of planning and development for Cebu and other parts of Central Visayas region. We have the Culinaria Sa Norte Culinary Tour, a two-day tour in northern Cebu that offers guests an immersive travel experience with food, nature, and culture. We have the Metro Cebu Marian Pilgrimage Tour and Museum Tour, a development and creation of a regional mice network, development of farm tourism circuits in Central Visayas, creation of a regional dive development program, 
and Central Visayas Ecotourism Loop in the nine protected areas in the region and many more. These tourism products and circuits reaffirm that the province of Cebu has much more to offer our tourists and it is a vibrant destination in the new normal. The DOT assures our kababayans that we are regularly monitoring and conducting site visits to make sure that tourism establishments follow the minimum health and safety protocols. Likewise, we remind our kababayans to always travel responsibly, submit to the guidelines of the various LGUs of your chosen destination, book only with DOT accredited travel agencies and tour operators, and always comply with the minimum health protocols. More importantly, I urge everyone to be fully vaccinated once there is an opportunity because only by doing so can we fully ensure our safety and reopen our economy. We live in challenging times, but we have to turn challenges into opportunities. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought opportunities for the tourism sector to rediscover the natural beauty of our islands and local culture and traditions and to develop these into tourism products that will provide a meaningful visitor experience. From here on, we will work towards a new and better normal with the lessons of resilience, responsibility, and sustainability. Trust that the Department of Tourism will continue to do its mandate of supporting our stakeholders and tourism workers and to fully maximize the resources we have to get the industry through these difficult times. Stay safe. Daghang salamat at mabuhay po kayong lahat. For that insightful and inspiring message about Cebu. Indeed, it's really a fitting start to our discussion today that is meant to wow everyone about Cebu. So for our first panelist, uh, he is from the Department of Tourism as well. He's Tourism's Undersecretary Roberto P. Alabado III, an urban and regional development planner. He worked in the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and Mindanao campuses from 1996 to 2008 as a researcher and then a faculty of the School of Management teaching MA in Urban and Regional Planning as well as Masters in Management courses. From 2010 to 2013, Yusek Alabado served as, an, as the Acting City Planning and Development Coordinator for the City Government of Davao. He then became the regional director of, G of DOT Region 11 from 2015 to 2017 before he was assigned to the central DOT office, became an assistant secretary, and now an undersecretary. Welcome, Yusek. Good morning, happens at the uh, Yusek, can we have a few words from you po for our Cebuano Kababayans and those who are tuned in right now? Yes, um, Mayo Hapon Satanan. So from the Department of Tourism, we are seeing that Cebu is going to have a very great time in um, during the recovery stage. We're in, we see the opportunities that were there before in the tourism sector as present. And we see that the demand of the products that we have in Cebu are very high. For example, when we talk about the, the outdoors, you have it there. When we talk about the, the food, it's there. When we talk about diving, it's there. So we, we in the Department of Tourism see that the tourism sector in the, in the island of Cebu and its neighboring provinces will have a very good opportunity to recover fast after uh, when things um, are much better when travel um, restrictions are eased. Thank you so much, Yusek. Um, now for our next panelist, we have Ms. Anami Yu Lamentillo, who is the chair of the Build, Build, Build Committee of the Department of, Pu of Public Works and Highways. She is the concurrent chairperson of the Infrastructure Cluster Communications Committee. Previously, she worked with both United Nations Development Program and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in their Haiyan Emergency Response and Rehabilitation Program. 
she, gra she graduated cum laude at the University of the Philippines Los Baños with a degree of development communications where she garnered the highest general rated average for development journalism majors and received a faculty medal for academic excellence. She completed her executive education in economic development in Harvard Kennedy School and her Juris Doctor program at the UP College of Law. She has been awarded Natatanging Scholar para sa Bayan and Oblation Statute for the Virtues of Industry and Magnanimity. Welcome, Anna May. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me, Teka. Maraming maraming salamat po. Um, Cebu is very close to our hearts. In fact, um, I think in the next uh, few uh, weeks, we will go back to Cebu to inaugurate and inspect some of the projects. Uh, since the start of Secretary Villiers term, and uh, we have completed 1,439 kilometers of roads and uh, 435 bridges in the whole of Central Visayas, not only specific to Cebu, and about um, 320 uh, flood mitigation structures. So, yan yung statistics natin dyan. And we also constructed about 7,656 classrooms. Um, and we were able to generate jobs. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of uh, our Cebuanos are, are excited doon po sa mga infrastructure project because while we're working on some of the big ticket infrastructure projects uh, like Cebu, Cordova, which is 8.5 uh, kilometer, which will connect the mainland Cebu uh, via the Cebu South Coastal Road papunta ng Mactan Island, meron din tayong bukas na. Ito yung uh, Gindolman and the uh, Badyang uh, Kogtong Road in Bohol, for example. We have the Alcoy Sea Wall, which is already completed. And uh, we are uh, working and starting already on the Metro Cebu Expressway, which is a toll-free expressway, um, just, which spans about 73.75 kilometers. So we're very excited about this, and I'm sure the Cebuanos are excited about um, yung master plan na ginawa uh, ni Presidente Duterte at ni Secretary Villar specific um, for Cebu and uh, Central Visayas. Thank you for that insi insightful information, Ms. Anna May. Now, we go to our next panelist. He is a mainstay in our webinars, providing us with the hard data and the right statistics to make better and informed choices or decisions. Joey Roy Bondoc is an associate director at Colliers Philippines. He covers office, residential, retail, leisure, and industrial segments, conducts macroeconomic analysis, and regularly assesses the impact of economic growth to the real estate sector. Our speaker is also handles engagement through market overview presentations to equity analysts, property investors, and real estate firms. Again, I bring you Mr. Joey Roy Bondo. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon and good afternoon to my uh, co-panelists. Uh, you know, taking off from your statement of uh, green shoots of recovery, definitely we are seeing that. And uh, definitely Cebu is uh, one of the areas outside of Metro Manila that we're really excited about because in terms of a potential for recovery, definitely Cebu will bounce back faster and stronger. I mean, looking at uh, some economic figures, of course, Cebu, part of Central Visayas, is one of the major contributors to the country's economy. Uh, tourism, of course, is a major driver of uh, Cebu's uh, economy. And uh, of course, we talk about the BPO sector. Cebu, outside of Metro Manila, is the largest BPO hub. But you know, talking from a real estate researcher's standpoint, of course, when you talk about Cebu, uh, it has the second largest office staff um, in the country, only second to Metro Manila. If you talk about condominium unit uh, and supply, of course, Cebu developers have really been aggressive in launching new projects, even uh, pre-pandemic. And uh, we believe that uh, once the market sentiment improves, Cebu will definitely capture these gains. And uh, this is one area, one metropolitan area that really holds a lot of promise. So we are definitely uh, looking Looking at these green shoots of recovery, and I believe that a lot of investors and, and developers are on the lookout 
for these opportunities beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, Joey, for that good news. And joining us is Ms. Nerisa Josef Mediano. Iris is the Assistant Vice President of Ayala Land, heading the Estate Development Group for Visayas. Iris was previously Project Development Head for the Ayala Land Strategic Land Bank Management Group and was involved in landmark developments such as the Makati Central Business District, Circuit Makati, and Vertis North in Quezon City. She also served as Project Development Group Head of Alveo Land and Project Development Manager of Avida Land. She completed her Bachelor of Science in Management Engineering at the Ateneo de Manila University and her Master in Business Management from the Asian Institute of Management. Originally from Metro Manila, Iris moved to Cebu in 2013 with her husband who hails from Cebu City and has since found home in the southern metropolis. Welcome, Iris. Thank you, Tech. Um, and also, good afternoon to um, the rest of the panelists and everyone here. Um, I just want to say that Ayala Land is very honored and grateful that Cebu has welcomed us since 1988. We started with what is now Cebu Business Park, and a few years after, we had Cebu IT Park. From then, Ayala Land owns or developed close to 200 hectares and has invested more than 100 billion across the group in Cebu. We are gratified that customers continue to patronize their products and estates. Our Cebu IT Park and Cebu Business Park are home to over 350 companies, both local and international. And CITP alone is home to over 70% of the BPOs in Cebu. We have launched close to 9,000 units um, here in Cebu. And we have a leasing asset of over 400,000 square meters of gross leasable area. We are in five estates here in Cebu in some of the most prime locations um, in, the, in the country, in the province. So... Um, we hope that moving forward, we will continue to remain relevant and responsive to our various publics and stakeholders while continuing to contribute to Cebu's growth. Thank you, Tech. Thank you, Iris. And thank you, everyone, for your insights. I'm sure we're off to a great start. But uh, before we, in we proceed with our Q&A, we would like to give an exclusive offer for our viewers. The Philippine Daily Inquirer is offering a free 30-day trial of its digital edition, Inquirer Plus. We are flashing the details on your screen on how to take advantage of this exclusive offer. To know more about the Inquirer Plus subscription, please visit shop.inquirer.com.ph. Okay, so let us now continue with our discussion and allow me to ask some follow-up questions. By the way, to our viewers right now, please feel free to join the conversation and ask your own questions. We will try to accommodate as many as we can over the next half hour. I'm sure you'd all want to take this opportunity to ask our panelists. In the meantime, let me throw the first question to our pa panelists and please Feel free to answer, react, or comment on the answers of your uh, fellow panelists. Okay, I think this goes for Joey and um, maybe Iris. Prior to the pandemic, why do you think many are drawn to Cebu? I mean, apart from the food and the, as mentioned, heritage sites, why do people want to explore, work, or live in Cebu? Iris first. Um, sure, Joey. I think you'll be. Yeah, no, but um, I think for us, I think um, when we when Ayala Land invested here, um, we believe that um, Cebu really has um, in terms of the economy, it's really a booming economy. Aside from that, um, I think it's also because of the um, of the kind of lifestyle that you get in Cebu. You get the best of both worlds in the sense that you have a really very serious work environment. But at the same time, you're very close to um, beaches and other attractions so that you can, you know, um, have your coffee or have your breakfast out there um, in the beach at the time. 
and then come to work in the city. Of course, traffic has been um, a challenge for some time, but still there are so many attractions here in Cebu that over the weekend, you can go over to these places, but at the same time, you know, have a place of work. We have developed, for example, IT, um, the IT park and the Cebu Business Park, both of which are home to um, our VPOs and other companies. And I guess um, one of the feedback we get there is really because of that. We also, I think, enjoy here in Cebu um, relatively um, uh, lower um, cost of living. That's, of course, very relative, but um, it's really the best of both worlds here. So you get fun and then at the same time, you get very serious work done. So I guess that's a major attraction here in Cebu. Joey, would you like to um, comment on Iris' uh, response? Well, definitely I agree with what uh, Iris mentioned, but uh, I was supposed to highlight Lechon. But, uh, you know, if you look at the indicators, uh, tech, definitely Cebu is uh, the spot where, you know, a lot of investors are really uh, looking into. And, um, you know, Cebu is one of the most competitive cities in, in the Philippines. If you talk about economic dynamism, Definitely, Cebu has one of the fastest growth rates. Central Visayas, and Central Visayas has one of the fastest growth rates here in the Philippines. You have government efficiency, ease of doing business in Cebu, of course, ranks high. Uh, if you look at the national competitiveness ranking infrastructure, of course, uh, Definitely, there were initial problems with the traffic, but what's positive is this is being addressed already by the national and local governments. A lot of infrastructure projects are in the pipeline and are due to be completed beyond 2021. Of course, we have the exciting um, Mactan uh, Cebu International Airport and its expansion in 2018, of course, was you know really a major boost, not just to the tourism sector, but to the entire uh, domestic economy. So I really think that the Cebu ranks high in terms of uh, the choices of investors uh, outside of uh, Metro Manila. And it helps that Cebu uh, is one of the more advanced in terms of the availability of integrated communities. That is important because, you know, to be in a business hub, you have to have adequate office supply, condominium units, and other amenities, right? And uh, over the past uh, few years, we have seen a lot of um, national and local investors really gravitating towards uh, Cebu City because of uh, the potential for capital appreciation, land value increase. In fact, uh, you can no longer see horizontal developments within Cebu City because of uh, the increase in the land values. That's why most of uh, the house and lot developments are outside the fringes of uh, Cebu City. So definitely Cebu remains on the radar of uh, investors and especially for BPO companies that are taking up office space, definitely Cebu is one of those key locations. Just an interesting insight that I want to share. When we had our first quarter 2021 uh, presentation, we did a survey on uh, the top uh, sites or locations that uh, investors are considering for their post-pandemic uh, office expansion plans. And Cebu is uh, among the top three locations. So it's no longer surprising that uh, Cebu really is an attractive site. And uh, we believe that this competitiveness, this attractiveness will really redefine Cebu beyond COVID-19 pandemic and moving forward. I agree with both Joey and Iris, but I agree on the Lechon. So now, <laughs> you mentioned Lechon, you mentioned infrastructure. I'm moving to Yusek Alabado. Yusek, when are we CPR? When do we, can we expect people flocking to Cebu again and enjoying that famous Lechon? Yes. Uh, looking at the, the trend right now, with the, the, the vaccination of the government now rolling out, the confidence of our travelers to really go out is there. If we're going to look at um, an example, uh, let's go to, to Boracay. Boracay right now is really enjoying a lot of people going there, visiting. And uh, it, it just opened recently. And we are now looking at uh, weekends, there's like a thousand people going there. 
and and that's high as of this uh, this um, um, quarantine um, mga lockdowns that is. So we're looking at um, Cebu will definitely be a, a very attractive destination because number one, you have the best dive sites in the Philippines. A lot of divers are now, uh, uh, they want to have their vitamin C. And you have been voted as one of the, if not the best island in the world. So it's the combination or the offerings of experiences that you have in Cebu that makes it a very active um, 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 vacation place. If I want to have um, an urban, um, let's say, kakain ako ng, if, if I'm going to eat lechon, then I am in, in, in the city. However, just 30, to one, uh, 30 minutes to one hour away, I can be in a resort with fine white beach, white sand beach. So that is the proposition that Cebu is offering. So a lot of, you know, of, of attractions that you can experience even just for a, a weekend. You can go from the mountains. You can have your canyoneering you know, once it's open. Uh, um, you have also the dive sites and the beaches and, of course, the culture. And we just celebrated our 500 years of Christianity and the center was Cebu. So if we're going to look at this 500 years of Christianity, the center is Cebu. So we are expecting pilgrimage um, um, to be there in Cebu. If you're a Filipino Catholic, look at where it started. That is Cebu. Indeed, I agree with you, Yusek Alabado. There are many things that can wow us about Cebu. Going beyond the lechon, and the other delic uh, delicacies. But, I mean, um, for your part, Joey, do you think, how, how would you rate the real estate and tourism industries? How is Cebu faring now? I mean, given all the challenges brought about by the pandemic, how is it faring now? Uh, we always get questions like, uh, will prices of uh, property drop in Cebu? We always say that we have, always been positive about the potential of uh, price increase of properties in Cebu. Um, for example, we're projecting a stable growth uh, for uh, Cebu property prices uh, in 2021 and even beyond 2021. Of course, uh, leisure is one of the factors that uh, has really contributed to a stronger condominium or house and lot take up. Uh, I know a certain place in Cebu, for example, where much of the demand for condominiums was driven by um, Japanese, young Japanese uh, retirees. So that's an interesting insight, right? And uh, we believe that once the leisure sector recovers, of course, then Cebu will be able to attract more um, tourists. And if those tourists eventually decide to live in Cebu, definitely that will contribute tip in the greater condominium take up beyond 2021. So Cebu as of now, um, of course, is experiencing some challenges in terms of office leasing, but uh, based on uh, Collier's Philippines uh, data, the latest data that uh, we have, there are a lot of BPO companies still that are looking at uh, Cebu for their potential expansion uh, beyond uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. So they're implementing split operations, work from home, as well as some employees still are reporting on site because uh, they are processing confidential information. So we believe that once the office leasing sector recovers, that again will be one of the factors that will contribute to a greater demand for condominiums and even um, house and lot units in Cebu City. Another factor that, of course, um, helps um, helps towards a stronger take up of condominium residential units in Cebu is the fact that uh, Cebu remains a major hub uh, of OFWs, Filipinos working abroad or being deployed abroad. It's a major source of OFW. So these uh, Filipinos, of course, continue to send in money. And that, again, uh, chips into the demand for these residential units. And uh, again, we hope that 
the global air travel recovery soon because that is one market that we believe will help drive the property market in Cebu. So we're really um, excited and uh, we believe that there will be greater uh, opportunities for Cebu City uh, after this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Thank you, Joey. Now, another major contributor to, to an area's growth or uh, for an area to flourish is infrastructure. Build, build, build has been one of the anchors of our economic growth. Now, let me ask Ms. Anime, infrastructures have always been viewed as something that help, can help pump prime the economy. How can the government's build, build, build initiative help do that in a post in a pandemic stricken Philippines, particularly for areas like Cebu? Well, a lot of people um, think of build, build, build as a traffic strategy. But uh, when you really think about build, 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 it's really a social economic solution. Um, we need to think about BBB as far as um, in view of the jobs it generates. For example, um, since 2016, we were able to generate 6.5 million jobs. And during the pandemic, a lot of the OFWs who were working abroad couldn't find jobs elsewhere. So the country had to absorb it. And it was BBB who, who did it. A lot of people are asking, bakit uh, tapos pa rin natin yung projects? Uh, despite the three-month uh, work stoppage, it was because we employed more construction workers to work on uh, the government projects. And I think um, this is crucial because... Uh, Metro Cebu Expressway, in the long term, when it's completed, will be able to connect uh, Minglanilla, Talisay, Cebu City, Mandawe, and Consolacion in Cebu. But in the short term, it's also able to generate jobs for Cebuanos who uh, lost their jobs um, in the Middle East, for example, or um, anywhere else. And now they could actually work in their country and uh, develop in its nation building. Um, for example, the flood control problem in Cebu, pati yung traffic problem, si Secretary Villar is very scientific. Um, talagang, we now have a master plan specific to Cebu that would address the backlog as far as infrastructure is concerned. So that the solution is scientific and doesn't end in this administration. We believe that you know, flooding and traffic, these are problems that could only be solved um, through science. And we have to choose the projects we invest in because the government does ha doesn't have limit, limitless or infinite resources. Um, it's really a finite resource and you prioritize the projects which you think would be beneficial um, to the province. And uh, for us, we're confident uh, the economic rate of return for the Metro Cebu Expressway is high. Um, this is a toll-free expressway, meaning it's locally funded. It's funded through taxpayers' money. This is a 73.75 high standard arterial road. We have already started the construction and this will serve as an alternate north-south uh, backbone highway. Kung uh, dati, uh, it will take you uh, very long to cross Naga to Danao with the construction of the Metro Cebu Expressway, mas mapapabilis yun. It will improve Metro Cebu's um, east-west, south-north intermodal transport. So uh, ito po, we'll have three segments. The first segment is about 26.8 kilometer, which will cross Minglanilla, Talisay, Cebu, Mandawe, and Consolacion. The second segment is about 29 uh, kilometers, uh, which is... Uh, which will expand the alignment to the now city. And the final section is about 17 kilometers, which will link it to Naga City. Uh, and this is just one of the many projects uh, in Cebu. For example, sabi kanina, pinag-uusapan natin yung Lechon, but let's not forget Dangit because the best Dangit in the Philippines is in Cebu. In Cebu. And... Uh, I've tried the, the Dangit Sabantayan Island. It's insane. I think, um, I think for me, as a personal preference, it's the best Dangit in the Philippines. So, uh, yung Dangit Sabantayan Island, 
mahilig ka sa dagit, pumunta ka sa Bantayan Island and use the recently completed access road to Madridejos. Because when you talk about Bantayan Islands, there are three island municipalities in the area. So DPWH has constructed a 5.9 kilometer which will connect the three island municipalities of uh, Bantayan Island, which is Santa Fe, Bantayan, and Madridejos. And if you've been there, you know how nice the beaches of Santa Fe is. You can uh, uh, diving down if you want to. It's a good, it's a very good uh, diving spot. You can go to Virgin Island if you want to. So, um, Cebu is a paradise in reality, and the more we're able to to make it accessible to the public, um, the better we are. Because the problem is people go to um, other countries. Uh, for tourism only because they don't know what the Philippines can offer because sometimes it's very hard to access those. But if um, you're given an opportunity to see how beautiful like Cebu is, uh, it's insanely crazy. Um, parang, uh, yung street foods uh, along Bogo City is very good, you know. Pwede kang kumain ng puso na, na kanin. And these are things that people or Filipinos have not experienced on a on a scale that we want them to only because it's so hard before but with the master plan that we're planning to build every every municipality in Cebu province every city in Cebu province should be interconnected and that's what we're uh, working on and the uh, you metro pacific uh para ka partner po namin sila sa build 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 in metro manila and also in Cebu city so if alam Alam ko um, yung 8.5 kilometers Cebu Cordova Link Expressway um, is on its final stages. It's on its advanced stages, and it's also included in the Mega Bridge Master Plan, which the goal and the vision is to connect Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao via land travel. Because now the cost of logistics is so. Um, expensive. It's mm-hmm. easier to send uh, from Luzon to, say, Malaysia or Hong Kong goods, but intermodal transport between Luzon and Visayas is so expensive. Um, our grandparents have been talking about a way to connect Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, but unfortunately, there's no real study. There's no scientific basis that would actually lead to the construction of these bridges. And that's what we're doing now. We're creating a master plan to create a series of bridges. Hopefully, the next administration, uh, the next ones in DPWH would continue. So that eventually, uh, the islands are no longer isolated. That one can actually travel and go through a long road trip from the Zuan Visayas and um, in the now. I, I think we can all agree that we are all awaiting for that um recovery for Cebu to wow us again. While it never failed naman to wow us, and I think we all agree that each sector will have to do something to be able to see that uh, recovery at a much faster pace. So we've mentioned about tourism, we've mentioned about BPWH. Now I'd like to ask Ayala, I mean as, a, as an investor in Cebu, um, you're one of the first players to actually come in in Cebu. Do you, um, after the pandemic, could you say that Ayala has already resumed its planned launches in the city? And where are you now in terms of your confidence in the province? Okay. Um, Ayala Land has some um, several product lines. Um, we remain confident and we remain committed to Cebu. Now, um, as to um, what projects we are, of course, we have a whole you know, slew of projects here in Cebu. Our, some are doing well, others are not. I think Joey talked about the BPO sector. That's one of the, quite frankly, that's one of the uh, businesses of Ayala Land here in Cebu that's doing um, pretty well, or at least um, is very stable at this time. Um, we are very happy that um, despite this pandemic, our, um, our tenants continue to stay with us and in fact have been expanding. Um, we, we are just um, close to um, closing one of the, um, our, well, our tenants who are expanding to some of our spaces. And in fact, we have also signed in someone who is new, which is also a BPO. 
So that one is a very bright spot for us. And quite frankly, we continue to do business there. For our um, residential, um, it continues also to be a good market for us. Um, we have seen that um, we continue to um, launch and, um, and we are gratified that there's take up. Uh, definitely, there are some adjustments in terms of affordability, but um, um, as a whole, it continues to move. So we continue to also focus on, on that sector. Now, our malls, while it was also um, uh, affected by the, uh, by the pandemic, um, we continue to in see increased um, traffic in our malls and with the, um, with the programs of DOT, we hope that um, there will be more who will be coming in and with the vaccinations, we expect more to be coming in. But to help out um, in the pandemic, of course, um, we have supported also and we continue to support our partners, our tenants in our mall, so they continue to be open. And then as far as also the vaccination is concerned, the Ayala Group has also been very active in supporting the government um, with the rollout. And this is also to help out, um, you know, kind of help in um, speeding up the recovery of the economy. And in the tourism, um, in the tourism sector, I think um, there's much been said about what can be done here. Um, we are hopeful that um, post-pandemic, um, there will be um, more projects. We actually have a pipeline of projects ready. And as soon as uh, the market is there and the market is ready, um, we will be continuing with the rest of the, um, with the rest of the projects. But in our estates as well, um, we see this pandemic actually as an opportunity to actually do improvements in our, in our estates, especially those that are operating. For instance, um, we talk about um, mobility. We have seen that um, during the pandemic, um, because of the uh, various restrictions, there has been some challenges in terms of mobility. So what we have done actually is to um, encourage people to walk. And when we saw that there was an increase in biking, um, in that biking um, activity, we have actually put in bike lanes already in our estates. So, and then mass transport, we continue to partner with mass transport groups so that they will continue to service our, our estates. Um, and um, of course, um, uh, considering also protocols and certain government um, government um, guidelines. Now, in terms of connectivity also for our estates, um, we see that because of this pandemic, it highlighted the importance of being of staying connected. So what we have done also, we have taken this opportunity to um, actually, we will be adding more telecommunication providers for our estates, um, both to enhance the, um, the experience of our BPOs. And at the same time, we have also, well, through our um, sister company, Globe, we have also enhanced during this time the cellular connectivity. And we continue to talk to other telco providers to increase the number of telecommunication um, providers in our estates. And then, of course, um, for security and safety, um, we also took this opportunity to enhance our um, incident management teams. We, we do have one in Ayala Land for all our estates emergency drills, even with the challenges of uh, meeting face-to-face, -face, and then health protocols, and so on. So I guess um, for us, um, even if there's a pandemic, we see this more as an opportunity to enhance our estates, and you know, we continue to be attuned to our um, publics, our stakeholders, and people inside our estates, um, our residents, our um, locators, office workers, so that we are able to um, continue to have a, an enhanced experience in our estate. So we think um, with that, um, we'll be able to um, kind of have a more relevant and very responsive estates um, for our projects. Thank you, Iris. With what you've shared, I can't wait to visit Cebu again. Yes, come here to Cebu. <laughs> and taste lechon and uh, anime yes. pantayan dangit. Okay. 
uh, we've heard Anna may shared a few of DPWH projects in Cebu and uh, its neighboring provinces. Um, Joey, how how um, important is infrastructure when it comes to pump priming the economy of a particular province or city? And also for uh, USEC Alabado, how crucial is it for, for the tourism industry to have a well laid well laid out infrastructure plan? So Joey first. Let, let me start with infrastructure. Of course, it plays an important role because you know prior to the current administration's massive infrastructure program, build, 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 we were only spending about what two, three percent of our GDP on infrastructure. But now this is uh, at about five to six percent of our country's uh, economic output. So that definitely uh, puts the Philippines at par with our Asian. Years. And uh, that is within the range recommended by World Bank, of course, being of uh, infrastructure expenditures. So we believe that uh, from a property researcher's standpoint, infrastructure plays an important role in improving connectivity, in raising land values, in raising property prices. That's why one of our key recommendations to our developers, partners, is to be more strategic with their land banking. Of course, a lot of of people will be choosing condominium units, house and lots, or uh, even offices that are near the infrastructure projects built or lined up by the government due for implementation uh, at in 2021 or after 2021. So definitely infrastructure has a lot of benefits. It benefits a common ordinary employee, a businessman, uh, a lot of workers, investors, end users. Uh, it really benefits a lot of segments across the board. And uh, definitely, if we want this country to grow at a much faster pace beyond the COVID-19 crisis, Infrastructure spending is one of the major pillars of this growth and will really anchor the country's uh, economic um, growth moving forward. And uh, we believe that uh, the infrastructure will definitely help um, redefine, uh, reshape the property landscape in Cebu. In fact, we already see a lot of interesting developments, integrated communities, but infrastructure will play a pivotal role role definitely uh, after 2021. You said, how yes. can infrast uh, mm. the government's build, build, build uh, project help revive tourism in Cebu? Yeah, okay. Um, before I, I, I answer that, uh, um, the previous um, thoughts of Joey about the Japanese um, young people buying um, units in in Cebu. Uh, I guess that there may be a connection with tourism because uh, we have discovered that in terms of um, ESL, we have English as a second language um, product here in the Philippines. Uh, foreigners come here to learn English, and Cebu actually has a very large. Um, uh, population of Koreans and Japanese who spend weeks or months here in, in Cebu just to learn English. That is one of the key products that we, um, uh, we may have overlooked before. And now we, are, uh, we will um, revive that after uh, when, when uh, travel restrictions are, are eased. And I think uh, that may be one of the, the, the contributors why, why foreigners are also buying um, real estate like condominium units in Cebu. So in terms of infrastructure, the Department of Tourism really sees that this is the key to have more people visit more areas. So if we're talking about um, airports, the Department of Tourism has um, coordinated with its um, a, a fellow department, which is the, the uh, uh, Department of Transportation. We have some uh, coordination projects for, and we can prioritize which destinations, which airports are to be given priority in terms of improvement so that the tourist arrivals there can be increased. So we can see this um, collaboration is what happened with 
with um, um MCIA, Bohol, Clark. So we were um, part of, of the, the coordination bodies there. And at the same time, when we talk about infrastructure in terms of road infrastructures, we have a, a, a collaboration uh, or convergence program with DPWH. We call it the, uh, the TRIP project. So that's a tourism road infrastructure project, which has been um, here for like almost a decade now. So we see the importance of, the, of um, uh, improving the connectivity between the service centers, let's say like Cebu, towards the municipalities where there are uh, uh, the natural attractions like the beaches and maybe the, the, the mountains, the, the, the resorts there. Uh, so the, the partnership is uh, DOT uh, will identify and prioritize those areas, those tourism areas which need these infrastructures. So then we talk with DPWH on providing the budget for such. And this has greatly improved a lot of, of roads all over the Philippines. And, and uh, also in Cebu, kaya we have um, the, the access now to the various tourism um, areas around the island of Cebu. So infrastructure will greatly increase tourist arrivals because they will have more destinations to, to, to go to. And what we want is more, uh, um, the, the nicer the infrastructure, the longer tourists would like to stay in an area. And that will contribute to the spread effect of the, the, the amount of spending that they're going to have. So it's not concentrated only in one area, but the spread effect is very, very big because of improved infrastructures. Thank you so much, Yusek. Now, um, Ms. Anami, again, um, can you name a few of the biggest infra projects of uh, DPWH that's set to really benefit Cebu and the Cebuanos? Yeah, so uh, as I've said, nandun nga po yung uh, Metro Cebu Expressway. These are uh, all to be, sorry, Anime, these are all to be completed projects or some are already completed? Sorry. Well, well some are already completed, but uh, some are uh, still underway. Uh, so, andyan nga po yung Metro Cebu Expressway, which is a 73.75 kilometer um, toll free highway. Then we have the Cebu Cordoba Link Expressway, which is an 8.5 kilometer bridge. Um, we're also very excited about the Fort uh, Bridge in uh, Cebu City. Ito po yung uh, Cebu Mactan Fort Bridge, uh, all the way dun sa coastal. But uh, um, we are still finalizing the details with our uh, foreign uh, counterpart because this is a, a foreign funded uh, project. So, and uh, this is just uh, the beginning because um, we've built a master plan specific for Cebu as far as flood control is concerned because we all know that the flooding is a major problem in uh, Cebu City. So I think that's one of the earliest uh, projects that we've undertaken, which is the Cebu flood control uh, master plan. Yung Cebu Mactan Bridge po natin, it's a 3.3 kilometer bridge, which will have an elevated viaduct of about 3.385 kilometers. And it will be connected doon po sa ating uh, 4.9 kilometer uh, coastal road, which will also have a 4.75 kilometer elevated by viaduct. What it will do, what would, what it will do is it will connect yung Mandawi City po sa Cebu Island and yung Lapu-Lapu City sa Mactan Island. Uh, this is a project uh, that we're undertaking with the Japanese government. The project cost is 76 billion pesos. Um, it will be uh, divided into several packages. And, uh, ito po yung una, yung uh, New Cebu Mactan Bridge. Then we will have uh, the Mandawi Coastal Road. Um, Matagal pa po to. Admittedly, we won't be able uh, to finish uh, this during the administration. But uh, this is what we're also proud of, that we will live up 
uh, we will live a, a life, um, a, a pipeline of projects um, that, uh, that the next government can uh, execute readily. And this is one of them. So ito po ay, it will be undertaken with the Japanese government. It will alleviate the traffic congestion doon po sa, sa Cebu area at sa Mandawe City because we also know how, how congested the uh, traffic is um, in, in the area. So, and then we have a lot of tourism convergence program. Um, kat, kat, katulad po ng sabi ni Sir Robbie Alabado, uh, when we talk about um, DPWH and Build, 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 this is um, a series of convergence because uh, President Duterte has always wanted a whole of government approach. So we have a lot of um, interlinkages with other agencies. With Department of Tourism, we always work with SecPerna also to ensuring that um, tourist destinations uh, like Madridejos, Bogo, are accessible to the public. And uh, this is ultimately the dream, to make sure that uh, Filipinos are able to visit our own uh, tourist uh, destination. And um, if may kita nyo po yung uh, beach sa Cebu, it's as beautiful as Boracay. But um, I guess the road network is not yet as... Uh, we need to add more to make sure that uh, it's easier to access. So um, uh, this is just a few of the hundreds of projects that are simultane that are parang ongoing uh, simultaneously dito at uh, uh, yun po. Thank you, Anna May. Now, uh, Iris, uh, I'm down to my last question. I think you're the best person to answer this one. So we've seen how tourism can help open up you know, new opportunities of a particular area to potential investors because once they enjoy and find the beauty of the place, we might just be able to convince them to relocate. The same goes for infrastructure. If you have enough infrastructure laid out, then people will find it very convenient and easy to live in a particular area. But in your case, how valuable are such infrastructure projects? How have this helped boost demand and uh, the value appreciation of your projects, whether for your offices, residential projects, such as those by Avida? Yes, um, I totally agree. Um, these infrastructure projects are very critical. They're very important. In fact, they're one of the most important components for our projects. Um, what this infrastructure give us, in one word, is accessibility. It makes everything accessible for us. So we are very grateful that DPWH has been doing a lot of these projects. For example, um, the project on the um, Cebu um, Cordova um, Link Expressway, that one has opened a lot of opportunities on both sides. Okay, um, before Cordoba has actually great beaches there. Um, they have nice, you know, um, attractions there. But it has always been at the back door, so to speak, because you have to go through several, to go to um, separate um, uh, bridges to get there and then pass through Lapu Lapu City before you get to Cordoba. Now with this bridge that DPWH through, um, um, through the CCLEX is doing, um, you're actually going to link Cebu City direct into Cordova, and that is going to open a lot of opportunities for Cordova. And as um, and for us, since we also have a project on the other side in South Coast City in SRP, um, that will also open up a market for us from Cordova. And at the same time, our own um, locators in our project in South Coast City will be able to enjoy um, the attractions in. Um, in Cordova. In fact, um, what um, uh, DOT um, Robbie Alabado has said, um, there are a lot of nice beaches actually in Mactan and they're just not so accessible. So with this, we think that the experience of those who actually live in Cordova, enjoying the beaches, the sun and the sand there, and then actually moving to work in South Coast City in SRP will now be very, very possible with that 8.5 kilometer bridge that DPWH is building. Now for the rest of our projects, of course, the 
um, what was mentioned, the Metro Cebu Expressway. Um, in real estate, those infrastructures are really very important and um, accessible that will open us um, open for us new locations where we can actually build more of our estates, build more of our products, reach out to more people, become, you know, um, uh, it will become very much available. Whatever our products, we're a full line developer, whatever our products, I think um, all this infrastructure will be very helpful. And that goes for our residential. Hopefully with this, actually the uh, Metro Cebu Expressway, it will open up to Naga all the way to Danao. So probably now we will have more access to much more um, land. Our Avida products and other um, product lines can actually expand, not just into condominiums, but also probably into more horizontal developments. And even with those, um, Cebu City also becomes very accessible. So those actually living as far as Zanao and Naga will find it very easy to come to um, the city. And that will further also enhance our existing um, estates like Cebu IT Park. So it actually works both ways. It's all about connectivity and accessibility. So thank you also to DPWH for undertaking these projects. Thank you, Ms. Iris. Well, that has been a very interesting hour for all of us. We've learned so much more about Cebu and we've missed the lechon and then get even more. We've learned about the DOT's efforts to ensure a safer and better travels here, the infrastructure projects that we should all watch out for, and of course, Ayala Land's own contribution to the robust economy of this province. Unfortunately, that's all that the time we have for today. But before we officially close our webinar, may we hear some final words from our panelists as to what they think makes Cebu still an attractive destination for both tourism and investment. Why should I do business, travel to, work, or live in, in Cebu post-pandemic? Maybe we can start with you, Sek. Yes. Um, for the post-pandemic uh, scenario, we see that the, the preferences of the travelers have now changed. They want to be in more open spaces. They want to be closer to nature. They want to go to the beaches. And these are the things that Cebu has. You have the diving, you have the open air, you have the open seas, you have all of these, uh, these activities allows tourists to safely travel. And we know that uh, the province of, of, of Cebu and its uh, cities are very, very good in ensuring the safety and the health of our customers. We have our tourism stakeholders are very, very um, diligent in following the protocols that the Department of Tourism um, has provided so that we can have safe travels. And this exemplifies now the, the effort and the promotion of the Cebuanos themselves to attract people to go to Cebu. And this is the belief that the Department of Tourism has in Cebu that when travel restrictions and confidence to travel rises and it is rising right now as it goes up Cebu will definitely be the place to be for our tourists thank you so much Yusek Alabado and now may we hear from the hardworking anime of TBWH um I think what makes Cebu attractive is that there's a synergy between the private sector the government and um from the local government officials to the um, executive. So um, I think everyone is working together to ensure that the BBB projects become a reality because at the end of the day, when these projects are completed, the lives of Cebuanos and the Filipinos who go to Cebu are changed uh, for the better. Um, usually, may counting bottlenecks lang, like the traffic and the... Again, um, we'd like to thank the 6.5 million construction workers who make Build, Build, Build possible because without them, we won't be able to build all these bridges and all these roads. And um, 
Ang hindi alam ng mga tao is that our construction workers are in a bubble. Meaning they don't see their families for the duration that there's a construction schedule. That's the sacrifice that each construction worker has been giving this country as uh, parang their contribution to nation building. Hindi sila umuwi until matapos yung project. And uh, uh, we know that uh, this is um, a big sacrifice for them. Uh, but that they're doing it still because BBB is a program that they believe in. And um, rest assured that we are working 24-7 to ensure that these projects are delivered um, on time in the most, um, um, in the best quality possible. Yan po ang utos si Presidente Villar at ni Secmar. Ah, ni Presidente Duterte at ni Secretary Villar. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Anna May. And now to our favorite resource person, Joey Roy Bondok of Colliers. Joey? Thank you, Tech. Again, thanks to Inquire for inviting Colliers. Of course, Cebu is a very attractive investment destination, but we believe that uh, there are three major factors that will continue to contribute to Cebu being a viable, feasible investment option. And these factors will keep Cebu on the radar of a lot of investors, whether you're BPO or traditional business. Of course, Cebu has a dynamic economy. It has an improving infrastructure backbone. And of course, your skilled manpower. So we believe that uh, Cebu will continue to attract a lot of investments, not just from property developers, but uh, from manufacturers and even other micro, small, and medium enterprises. And currently, Cebu, as I mentioned, is your second uh, most attractive BPO destination, only next to Metro Manila. Currently, Cebu has, what, 1.2 million square meters of office supply, and about 160,000 square meters will be added this year. It has about 50,000 condominium units, and about 6,500 more will be added towards the end of 2021. And that only shows that uh, you know there's a lot of investment potential still in Cebu. And given the improving infrastructure connectivity, there will be green shots of recovery. There will be opportunities for leasing, for capital appreciation. That's why more property developers such as Ayala Land that have really been uh, looking at Cebu for their projects and have been lining up their residential developments in Metro Cebu. So, you know, interesting times definitely. We're seeing greater inoculation vaccination rates in, in the Philippines. And we hope that hopefully Cebu fully opens up so that we can finally try Lechon as well as Tangit. Thank you, Joey. And now maybe hear it from Miss Iris. Yes, thank you. I totally agree with the rest of the panelists, CCU SEC, um, um, DPWH, and also Joey. Um, Ayala Land has been a host to a lot of um, these businesses um, that you've mentioned, from small micro um, enterprises, even for um, BPOs, even, even the residents. We've been a um, we've been hosting them in our estates, in our own developments, and even for tourism in our hotels. And we certainly hope that um, the pandemic will be um, um, coming to an end soon with all the efforts of um, everyone, the government, and even the private sector. So with that, um, I think um, Cebu will continue to be a very dynamic economy and Ayala Land is prepared and is very much committed to providing um, all the spaces that are needed to be able to um, to be able to contribute to this growth. So thank you. Thank you, Iris. And again, thank you to everyone who joined us for this webinar. To our panelists who lent us to their their expect their expertise to know more about Cebu. And to our viewers, I hope you were all able to pick up a few points that are useful for you or your businesses. Again, we can't wait to visit Cebu, to try their lechon, to eat their otap, and to have a, 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 an experience in their um, beaches. Again, we would like to thank our viewers for being a part of Inclusive, the Inquirer webinar series, as well as Ayala Land. 
for partnering with us for this webinar. Please continue reading the Philippine Daily Inquirer for authoritative news and features. Check out the property section every Saturday for a balanced mix of light features, DIY tips, and serious news about the real estate industry. Do check out the Philippine Daily Inquirer digital newsstand and Inquirer Mobile where you can easily find stories from Inquirer Property. Again, this is your host, Texa Maniego, editor of the property section of the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Thank you for joining us today and stay safe, everyone. Chasing what makes me feel alive to making my way into the world. I am ready to make great strides towards my goal. From juggling a busy life to choosing one that brings me joy. I am ready to go with what's best for me. From realizing my potential to going after bigger investments. I am ready to secure my future.